Good morning. Sunday morning. Sean here, Mountains Garage. I closed yesterday's video and I did not cover a couple things that I promised to cover and a couple things I thought of after the fact on assembling the Race Turbo 400 transmission. I was in a hurry. The wife wanted to cut my hair. <laughs> and I was hungry. Poor excuses, I know, but I'm only human. So let's go over a few things we missed. Let's talk about thrust washes. In general, you can always put a metal one or brass one in place of a plastic one, but you can't do the opposite. You can buy a whole kits that turn the whole transmission to metal ones. There's nothing inherently wrong with the plastic or composite ones. They're in their chosen location. Engineers are smart enough to know that they'll do the job. Uh, a lot of people like these better. In yesterday's video about the direct and forward drums I told you I found a box with a I forgot I even bought with a forward clutch hub and this Torrington Baron so I assembled this separates the direct and forward drums inside the transmission and then when I went to check my end play which normal turbo 400 has between a selected washer between 60 thousandths and 120 so you select one in there to set your end play and you're good to go when you're working on something so popular as a Turbo 400 that's been out of production for 30 years, and we've been modifying them for 50 or more, if you're out of the realm of normal, you better look in the mirror and find out what you did wrong, because it's not normal. So anyway, when I couldn't find a selective washer thin enough, I had to start thinking, where did my end play go? It went right there. That's about 130 thousandths normally. That's about 79, I think. So, I installed one of those, took the Baron out, and now I was right back in the middle range and was able to set my end play. Uh, didn't make me not second guess myself. I actually stripped another forward drum I had to compare the billet hub with a regular hub. Uh, they were identical, so I knew that I was good to go to put one of those on. And, uh, You've got a problem solved sometimes. I've decided to run a speedometer. In this one, I don't know its final destination. Uh, I built five Turbo 400s for this Nova in six months and sold them all. Uh, this one I'm going to try to hang on to because I like it. I liked them all. Build something you know that you love and for yourself, and it sells pretty easy anyway. So I'm going to go ahead and put the speedometer in. When you do, make sure there's no wear where that seal's going to ride. The seal is in here. Take the time to change that seal. It's got a little spring clip holds it in. And of course, a new O-ring, well, that'll make the most annoying leak ever. If this is not smooth, and when you slide that into that seal, if you don't feel a drag, it's going to leak. And there's nothing more annoying than that. I hate leaks. I promised to cover the sizes of the various freeze plugs or cup plugs that you can use in a Turbo 400. Inch and 15 sixteenths, that's the Dorman pot number, inch and 15 sixteenths. That will plug this speedometer hole. GM did it in four wheel drives because the speedometer drive is on the transfer case. You can put a tiny bit of sealer around it, drive it in, and you don't have a speedometer drive anymore. This one's seven eighths. That's the Dorman pot number. That'll plug your electric kick down pass through if you're running, for instance, an external solenoid uh, trans brake and you don't want uh, this over here just leaking because there's an O-ring that seals that piece of plastic. They're pretty good about not leaking if you put a new O-ring on it, but still, put a cup plug in there. Uh, it's probably not going to leak ever, but you lose the hole you can knock it back out afterwards these aren't permanent modifications but good to know you have options and finally the 3 8 that's the Dorman pot number this would be to drive into the case doing your dual feed on the direct clutch mod you drive this into the case of the transmission if your valve body didn't already block the hole for you like in our case I showed you that ball and setup they got going on 
and they said no case modifications well you don't have to do any mods so but I keep these because sometimes you do have to plug that hole I'm ready to install my pan and while our valve body doesn't actually have any moving valves in it other than the transbrate release solenoid that dimple in the pan in the stock pan is made to hold a magnet GM was typically too thrifty to give you one of those but I got a collection of them. Some transmissions like the 700, they were a little better because they had a lot of trouble. Uh, so I go ahead and stick one in there. It's not going to hurt a thing. It's going to collect any metal floating around that's magnetic. Just a cheap mod, good idea. While checking end play, you can set up, uh, the GM tells you to use your slide hammer adapter to go into one of these bolts to hold the pump in to set the dial indicator up on the end of the shaft this is your end play but also my method if I can get the light in there you can look right down at the oh, this is hotter than it looks but take my word for it I'm looking right at the forward drum and the selective washer and I can just slide Feel a gauge down in there. It's a lot easier, other than my method of showing it to you. But yeah, it's you can set up the dial indicator. I just use a feel a gauge right down through the hole. That's why I hesitated to put the pan on when I did the valve body video. And then there's my ugly tail housing. Uh, to buy a new one, it start at seventy five dollars, but they're pretty sweet. They're brand new. They come out of the package. The bushings are right size. Uh, but this one, I'll, I have it. i got to try to fix it. I'll put a new bushing in it. Again, put some retaining compound or Loctite on it. Drive it in. Get yourself in your yoke, or I, I use a new yoke. And a lot of times you got to hone that with a brake cylinder hone or blueberry stick, whatever you got. Just get the clearance right again because you can't have the yoke tight in there. It'll destroy it. i got a broken bolt. It started above the surface and... I got tired of welding nuts on it. You can see the bolt gets shorter every time. I'm breaking the bolt right off, so I think it's soft enough. I'm going to drill. I'll end up helicoiling bolt to 7 16 course. It's, right now it's M10 1.5, which are your only two options. They were 7 16 forever. And then when they converted the transmission to half metric, uh, this is one of the bolt holes that got changed. That's in my other video. Final thoughts on this project uh, that we just rebuilt. Uh, I've got a lot of positive feedback. People are going to maybe try it themselves for the first time. That's awesome. There's nothing better. No better feeling than putting this effort in and then going out and actually road testing it in your car and, and reaping all the benefits. Uh, what benefits? The transmission that we just built probably costs less than the truck freight and the core charge on a transmission if you had to pick up the phone and buy one. I'm not talking about the, the actual optioned out transmission you bought. I'm just talking the truck freight and the core charge. You go buy yourself on Craigslist or Facebook Marketplace a couple hundred dollar core, maybe spend a thousand dollars in parts at the most, and you're good to go. And you could fix it again because. Uh, it, it'd be a fairy tale to believe that even though you spent five, six, ten, twelve thousand dollars on a transmission, that it's not going to break or wear out. Of course it is. <laughs> I've already been into ones with one pass on them, built by really professional companies through no fault of anybody's. Here it is on my bench. So uh, it's not. You can't spend your way out of the fact that your transmissions are needy and they need maintenance. So do it yourself. You're going to be better off. So if you're watching this video, you're probably going to give it a try. Don't be afraid. There's so much. If you, each part of, the, of a Turbo 400 being so popular, uh, you can Google reaction carrier end play. Uh, now you got me talking about that. The service manual only talks about front and rear end play. The experts will tell you there's four places of end play you got to check. Reaction carrier being one of them and the distance between the forward and direct clutch drum, which 
I already showed you caused me problems. So they all add up to total end play, but the book only, GM only made you worry about the front and the back. Uh, anyway, if you Google any problem, any part of that transmission, there's information out there. Most of it's even accurate. <laughs> it's the internet, so if you don't read it a couple times, it's not true. Thanks for following along. Who knows what we're going to rebuild next? I got stacks of projects, both my own and the money that's still here. It's Sunday, and I'll be working on that again today. And tomorrow and the next day. All right. Like and subscribe. Thanks for following along. Till next time.